starting off with a few definitions. First of all, risk management. Now this is a process that allows individual risk events and overall risk of a project to be understood and managed proactively, thereby optimizing success by minimizing any threats and maximizing opportunities. Now that may come as a surprise to you that there are two flavors of what we generally call risks, and that is negative threats, which is the normal interpretation, but also the probability of ensuring that opportunities actually occur. The common link here is because both negative threats and positive opportunities have an element of uncertainty or probability, if you will. So, risks are the exposure of stakeholders, to the project of course, to the consequences of variation in outcome. That sounds a rather generic description, doesn't it? Even though it's quite true. So here's another definition which is closer to the point. A risk is the potential of an action or event to impact on the achievement of the project objectives. So here's a high level snapshot of what we need to do when carrying out risk management. You need to identify the risks in the first place, then assess them and then manage and control them. So the second step of assessing includes something called risk analysis. And this is an assessment and synthesis of risk events to gain an understanding of their individual significance and their combined impact on the project objectives. So this ties in nicely with this second definition up here. By identifying both negative threats and positive opportunities and their impact on the objectives of the project. So let me show you both sides of this risk coin, starting with a threat, the definition that you're probably most familiar with when the use of the word risk is used in common language, if you will. So this is a risk event that has a negative impact, such as swimming in uncharted waters, for example. The other side of the coin is an opportunity, and this is a risk event that has a positive impact. So as viewed by this hungry shark here, you could be seen as food. It's certainly a threat to you, but the shark would see it as an opportunity, no doubt about that. Don't worry, I shall go into much more detail about threats and opportunities throughout this module. There's also something called the Risk Management Plan, which is really a strategy document, because it states how you will define risks in the first place, monitor them, and then go on to control them throughout the project. It also defines how you will manage risks. However, be clear, it does not define the responses to individual risks. You'll learn how those are captured on the risk log. Just think about it for a moment. If each project is unique and the environment of each project will differ, then it would make absolute sense, based on the various attributes of a project, to sit down and say, in this particular case, what is the best way to actually define, monitor and control risks? So the risk management plan defines how the risk management processes will be implemented in this particular project, how they will be monitored and how they will be controlled throughout the whole life of the project. And of course, because risks need to be managed, it also states how risk will be embedded in the project management activities. We'll look at typical contents of the risk management plan in detail shortly. But first, I want to expand this picture here to show you the terminology and sequence that you'd want to use. So the risk management process could be seen as a series of steps, if you will, starting with initiate, then identify, then assess the risks, then plan the responses to each risk, and then to implement those responses. And this diagram should show you very clearly how this is an iterative process, and is borne out by my statement down here that the risk management sequence is cyclic throughout the project. Let's look at the first step here, which is initiate. This is defining the scope and objectives of risk management. And all of this is captured in the risk management plan, which I briefly mentioned in the previous slide. This is a strategy because it explains how risk management will be applied in this particular project. The next step is to identify the risks themselves. And there are many techniques used for this. I'll explain them all to you throughout this and the next module. The most important item here is to set up a risk register because it's on the risk register that the details of each unique risk will be captured, including the probability of each risk happening, what each risk's impact will be, and what responses will be used for each risk. 
Typically a risk register could be a database or it could be a spreadsheet or it could even be a table set up within a document with each row if you will giving the full details for each risk. That brings us to the next step which is assessing each risk and there's two approaches here. The first is to perform what's known as a quantitative risk analysis. The word quantitative is used here because you use actual quantities or numbers if you will and what this does is to assess the combined effect of risks on the project objectives. In parallel with that you'll also be performing qualitative risk analysis which means that's subjective and you'll see why because it will use language such as high, medium and low for example and the purpose of this is to prioritize the risks. Don't worry, I shall show you how to do all of these in detail. Of course, as a result of carrying out such risk analysis, then this data will be updated on the risk register itself. So already you should be seeing that the risk management plan is a strategy, but it's the risk register that contains the details of each risk and will be used as the central tool by, for example, the project manager in managing, monitoring and controlling all of the risks within a project. But we haven't finished our sequence yet. The next is plan the risk responses. And as you might imagine, there would be different responses for threats as opposed to opportunities. For the moment, see it simply as you trying to minimize threats and maximize opportunities. Once again, such responses are added to the risk register. Which brings us to the final step here, which is implement and control risks. This will be carried out during the implementation phase, for example. So, risks can be escalated upwards and delegated downwards between a project or a program or a portfolio. And escalation processes will normally include management by exception and the use of tolerances, which I'll discuss later. As you might imagine, According to the nature and type of each risk, you may need decisions to be made by someone more senior than you. Another aspect which needs to be identified and managed is risk behavioural influences, as these too can impact risk management effectiveness. So this then is the top level picture of the risk management sequence. Let's stay here for a moment for the next slide. Here they are again, initiate, identify, assess, plan risk responses and then implement the responses. And there is an iterative relationship between these as well as managing the process. The reason, if you think about it, is that it is used for the first time during the planning of the project. However, as the project progresses through its various stages, the original assessment and responses may change and need to be updated. Some risks will go away. Many risks will change their probability and or their impact. And for this reason, this whole process is an iterative one. Now, another term you need to become familiar with is called risk context. This describes institutional and individual environment, attitudes and behaviours that affect the way risk arises and the way it should be managed. Do you remember we covered project context in a very early module? And you saw that the context within which the project sits will determine the way in which that project should be managed. The same, of course, is true with risks. Just think about the difference between managing risks in an IT project versus managing risks on an offshore oil rig, as an example. So let me summarise each of these steps, starting with initiate. The purpose here is to gather project risk information and develop the risk management plan. Step two, identify, is to identify the threats and opportunities that could impact, positively or negatively, the project objectives. Step three is to assess each risk, estimate the probability and impact for individual risks and, of course, their aggregated, or summed, if you will, risk exposure. Then plan the responses, and this will mean determining a range of possible responses for each risk, bringing us to implement those responses, and of course monitor their effectiveness. You may have chosen a particular response for, let's say, risk number 10, and in carrying out those actions, finding that they're not appropriate or they're not working. 
in which case you may need to modify your originally thought through responses. And as the project progresses through its various phases and stages, new risks may come to light that were either not identified at the beginning of the project or didn't exist until this moment in time.